Welcome back. You're watching Channel 1 Liverpool with me, Rifat Malik. Channel 1, Hubrook. Channel 1, Albert Dock. Time to take a look at the headlines now. It's 10 to 11. I'm Rifat Malik. 9 o'clock, I'm Rifat Malik. Christopher Alder was found dead. All political campaigning has stopped. Stand head to head with... Thank you again, Mr. Derek Holder, for joining us today on the Muslim Viewpoint. Uh, we're glad to have you. Republican Jim Baird is the incumbent for Indiana's 4th Congressional District, where you are running currently as the Democratic candidate. He has held the seat for five years. Why do you believe that you would be a better representative for the constituents there? I believe because I have the experience that most of the people that live in District 4 have growing up impoverished and going into the Marine Corps, pulling myself up by the bootstraps and first person in my family to go to college, then becoming a paralegal and working for the state and federal government. I have worked my entire life for the public sector. And this was just a natural progression of that because I truly care about everybody who lives in District 4. And it just seems like Representative Baird is only caring about big ag and big pharma right now. And that's who's mainly bankrolling him right now. Well, Indiana has a population of just around 45,000, not the largest, but still a significant amount. Um, how would you address the needs of this community, such as religious freedoms and protection from discrimination? I believe that First Amendment is paramount with freedom of religion. I mean, there is a lot of anti-Semitism out there, a lot of anti-Hindu, a lot of anti-Muslim rhetoric going around right now. And we need to squash that. I mean, we're all Americans. We're all trying to make a better life for us and our own children. And there's no reason for religion to come into it. I mean, what you worship and what I worship shouldn't matter. But we believe in side of ourselves that matters and so i mean religious freedoms should be a moot point because it's in our constitution but it's not and we need to knock it off right and so what are your thoughts on um you know the recent blurring between the line of separation of church and state um specifically when it comes to more christian ideas um being pushed into legislation uh, currently, we saw that with the overturn of Roe v. Wade, um, as the conservative voice was <clears throat> very loud there. Um, I saw a meme a couple of days ago that had a church on one side and the Capitol building on the other, and it said, build this wall. Um, I mean, it's separation of church and state is paramount to our form of government. And religion should have nothing to do with our government and our government should have nothing to do with our religion. Indiana is similar to Texas where we are based in the way of lax gun laws. Um, mm -hmm. Open and concealed carry without a permit for anyone over 21 is allowed. Do you believe that this is the best way to protect communities from possible mass shootings? No. I mean, I am a true believer in the second amendment. It's in the constitution. It's there for a reason. But we have to be smart about it. We have to make sure who is getting their hands on handguns and rifles. And if you're like on the no-fly list, then you should be on the no-buy list. Um, we should have red flag laws. We should stop the um, allowance of buying a gun in Indiana and taking it across state lines into Chicago. Because our two, Illinois and Indiana, are so linked, especially up in the region, in the Chicago region, that they affect each other. And that is actually making its way to Indianapolis, because Indianapolis is getting a larger crime rate. I mean, we just need to be smarter about our gun laws, and we need to make sure who's actually purchasing the weapons do not have really bad mental issues. Right. Yeah. And then you've kind of already touched on it, but can you just maybe further elaborate on what kind of specific legislation you would support um, concerning gun reform? 
Uh, definitely uh, red flag laws. Also, getting rid of bump stocks, making sure that fully automatic weapons are not available for sale. Um, there's no reason somebody needs an AK-47. There's no reason somebody needs an AR-15. If the normal is, oh, it's for hunting. You seriously need an AK-47 to go hunt? <laughs> it's like, come on. Um, I mean, yes, they are fun to shoot, but no, uh, you don't need it in public. Um, it just turns into bad situations. And abortion is essentially banned in Indiana, with exceptions for cases of rape, incest, um, up to 10 weeks, or if the mother's life is in danger. Um, do you think this ban is appropriate for women no. and families who need this kind of health care outside of these two categories? And, um, you know, how, how would you address this? Um, absolutely not. Um, we need to codify Roe v. Wade in Congress. Um, it is a woman's choice. Um, we need to take the politics out of the doctor's office. And, I mean, there's women out there that don't know they're pregnant at 10 weeks. I mean, it's ridiculous to try to legislate other people's bodies. I mean, we're supposed to be the nation of freedom. We're slowly becoming a totalitarian state. Yeah, and then, uh, so I just wanted to move on to more recent nationwide protests. Um, you might be aware of the mass killings in Gaza. A few months ago, students at the Indiana University uh, were arrested for peacefully protesting about this, uh, like so many others were nationwide. Is criminalizing them an attack on free speech? And what are your views on the cause um, that essentially humanitarian, or the essentially humanitarian cause they feel so passionate about? I mean, I love my IU. I'm a proud graduate of Indiana University, and it shames me that this happened down in Bloomington. I mean, as long as it is peaceful, free speech, we are bound to allow it because we have freedom of speech, as long as it is peaceable. And what happened in Bloomington was peaceful. It was a peaceful protest. And the way that the school handled it was horrible and we need to make sure we codify you know free speech if we have to come up with another law saying free speech is free speech then what's the constitution for and what they were protesting they have every right to protest it it's human rights violations um over in palestine and israel i mean i'm a proud jewish person but what is going on in israel needs to stop it is Netanyahu is, I mean, he's a war hawk. He's always been a war hawk. We need to make sure that war crimes stop. Humanitarian efforts are allowed into Gaza and the West Bank um, to help the Palestinians who are being assaulted over there and overrun. Yeah, and then can I just follow up, um, since you mentioned that you are Jewish, um, have you faced any backlash, you know, being anti-Netanyahu, um, anti-Israeli government, either in your campaign or just personally? No, absolutely not. Indiana's kind of weird where, yeah, it's mostly a Christian state, but there are large populations of Jews and Muslims and Hindus and Sikhs within my district. Um, in Hendricks County is one of the largest populations of Sikhs and Muslims in Indiana. And I mean, it's at least in my district where the cities are, it's not an issue. Um, don't talk much religion out in the rural areas, but I haven't had any issue. All right. Thank you again, Mr. Holder, for joining us today. I don't have any further questions for you. Um, so just, yeah, thank you so much. 